Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be discussing the market cycle ROI, or return on investment. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Link is in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we've talked about this chart many times throughout the years. The general idea is, is sort of measuring the return of Bitcoin from the low from the bear market year, right? So it's kind of hard to do it for the first, you know, for, for cycle one and cycle two. And, and honestly, you could come up with a good reason to just combine one and two into a single cycle. But if we just exclude those, and just look at the ROI off of the low from 2014, the ROI off the low from 2018, and the ROI off the low from 2022, you get a chart that looks like this. And remarkably, despite how different the paths have been to get to where we are today in all three cycles, the ROI from that low from the bear market year has actually been the same, more or less in all three of them. You can see, in fact, that in the third cycle, which is the cycle that I'm, I'm sort of referencing starting at the end of 2014 from that low, you can see that at this time in the cycle, the, the orange line, the ROI from that low was about 2.45x, whereas the ROI from the low in 2018 at this time was at about 2.88x. And in the current cycle, the ROI from where we were back in in sort of mid-November of 2022, the ROI has been about 2.75x. So right now, the ROI is actually closer to the last cycle from that low than the cycle before. And the path that those two cycles took from where they were at this point, you can see we're, we're currently on day 413, those two cycles took completely different paths over the next few months, right? I mean, while they ended up being pretty similar 200 days later, so let's say by, you know, Q3, uh, you know, Q3 of the halving year, while they basically ended up being the same um, Q3 of the halving year, you can see that the path to getting there was very, very different. And in fact, by day 567, the ROI was more or less not that different from where they were at this point in the cycle. So basically thinking about another, you know, six months going by and, you know, five to six months going by and the price not really being that different. But again, the path to getting to, the, to that point out in, say, Q3 of the halving year was very, was very, very different from if you look at just the last two cycles. And one of those cycles, right, one of those cycles, what happened after this point, this is, you know, let's just overlay the current current cycle. You can see that one of those cycles, the, the, the price of Bitcoin basically just went sideways for several months, in fact, and didn't do anything substantial until about day 500. Again, we're currently on day 413. So that would correspond to another 80 days of, of relatively boring price action for Bitcoin. But on the other hand, if you look at the, the last cycle, which was cycle four, which is actually where the ROI is closer to today, you can see that it actually pressed higher into about day 427. So around the 427, 430 mark, which is another two weeks, another two weeks out, right? So if we take 14 days from the current day, that puts you out on day 427 which is exactly two weeks from today, right? Coincidentally, that's also theoretically around when there might be some type of resolution on, on the spot ETF stuff for Bitcoin, about two weeks from now, right? Sometime in, in early to, to, to early mid-January, based on what people are saying on Twitter. Not that I have any idea as to, as to the outcome of it or exactly when it'll happen, but... The prevailing sentiment, I, I think, from, from a lot of people that I think are have a better handle on it than I do, um, sometime, you know, first, second week of January, perhaps the second week of January, which coincidentally is about two weeks from today. So it would be interesting to keep an eye on because, you know, two cycles ago from this point, Bitcoin basically just went sideways. But 
last cycle, it didn't really just go sideways at this point. It, it actually continued to go up until the ROI was over 3x, right? Meaning we sort of had gotten ahead of ourselves because the cycle before that didn't really reach a 3x move until, until several months later, right? Day 500, which is still three months out. And that aggressive move to the upside, of course, we had the pandemic and, and we saw a pretty aggressive move back to the downside where the ROI from the low was only about 49% up. It was actually less than that if you include daily closes. We know if you include daily closes, it got much closer to the low, but in this chart, we're only concerned about daily closes. So I just wanted to sort of bring this chart up and, and to show you that in general, markets love climbing the wall of worry, right? They do, um, you know, I, I think it's important to discuss the risks and, and yes, there's a lot of, there's always going to be a lot of things to be worried about, especially in the macro. And if a recession comes in 2024, then we could have something similar to what happened um, last cycle. But it's pro if, if it is, it's probably going to play out in a very different way, right? In a very different way than it did last cycle. Because none of these things, you know, whenever we've looked at prior charts and looked at fractals and whatnot, it never plays out the exact same way, right? The charts never play out in the exact same manner. So you can look at the paths, the last two paths that the market took and be somewhat confident that it will not follow either of those paths to the T, right? We also can look at this chart and say, well, generally speaking, from one cycle to another, we have experienced diminishing returns. This is not a popular view, and it wasn't a popular view last cycle. And I, I mean, again, I understand that a lot of people will say that, 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 that it'll break at some point. And the truth is, at some point, it probably will, right? It's not going to just be this easy. But diminishing returns is one of the views that last cycle we said was the reason for Bitcoin being unable to go to 300K. And the reason for that was in order to go to 300K, Bitcoin's ROI from the bottom would essentially have to be the same as it had been for the prior cycle. And history shows us that that was unlikely to happen. Okay. And so last cycle from the bottom, you can see that Bitcoin only went up um, about 20, you know, about 20x or so, maybe a little bit more if you include daily wicks and whatnot. Um, and so we're already, you know, already Bitcoin is at, is at about 2.2. 75 right 2.8 something like that um yeah 2.75 x off the low so you can see that even in in the last two cycles if we were to sort of just get rid of these really quick even by day 600 the roi off the low was about three and a half x in in both cases right so this is day 630 again we're only on day 400 you know, a little over 400 right now. That is, you know, two thirds of a year away. You're, you're talking about the latter part of the of the having year, um, and and the path to getting to that should be quite interesting one, because we still, of course, have many things to get resolved. Likely sometime between now and then, including, you know, yield curve resolution, the uninversion of the yield curve, theoretically rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. Uh, do they cut quickly enough to sort of hit a soft landing or or do they cut too slowly and a hard landing um, and a hard landing is, is is the outcome. So there's those events and I imagine we need to get through those events at some point here over the next, you know, let's call it six, seven, eight months. And the path that Bitcoin will take will very much be dependent on, in my opinion, anyways, the, the way that the macro shapes up. Over, over that time period, whether the unemployment rate goes up or whether um, inflation just slowly goes down without the, without the unemployment rate going too much higher. I, I do think those will play a role. But anyways, I just wanted to show the market cycle ROI, show where we currently are, what happened in, in the last couple of cycles. And, and hopefully you can look at these sort of charts and, and get a better understanding of, of the bigger picture of the cryptoverse, understanding the risks that are involved if, if something were to happen in terms of monetary policy, um, but also not missing the forest for the trees. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Bye.